to grow here in the garden. It's uh, placed in really poor soil, lots of gravel, and it has a uh, full sun all day. And it's really starting to pop. It's uh, lavender, the variety called Thumbelina, so it's not um, too high. Uh, and it's really great for insects like bees and butterflies. Really love this. Um, so it's really a beautiful uh, height as well for the garden here. Here's a really nice one. Uh, it's called Jupiter's Beard. Sporebellion in Danish. Really nice one here. And all the bees are already out in it. And further over here, we have a, also a really nice one, a geranium, a very low one, with this really uh, purple, light purple color that's really covering the ground here, which is really nice. And already now, the, we have different kinds of uh, salvia uh, here. I really like it, a uh, deep purple, but really compact, really good for the border here. And further up here, we have um, a really tall one, native to Denmark here. In Danish, it's called a uh, cat, uh, cat Yeah, that's a funny one. We you try to use a lot of Latin names because uh, in Danish, yeah, it's called what, Lars? Uh, cat cheese, like catost. It, yeah, catost translates into cat cheese. It's in the mallow family, so it's, it's a mallow plant. But yeah, so it's cat cheese for anyone who's interested in learning a little Danish. It's really pretty. It reminds me sort of of that, of a hollyhock because of the mm. height of it. But we put it here in this new flower bed to... It's as tall as me, actually. Yeah, to try to hide the trampoline for now. Yeah. What else is new since last week? Uh, what did we have? Ah, this one's starting to really show out, Lars. Yeah, that's really a, a nice one. It's uh, in Danish, it's called a uh, natlus. Yeah, so it's a night light. Uh, in Danish, but it's an evening primrose, so it's an onothera plant. But that's a funny one that they call it a night light because it opens up in the evening. So it's about yeah, it's gonna close up now and all these are finished. But it also has a really like like really light yellow. It's really pretty, a really pretty co uh, color compared to the more <laughs> bright color of the snapdragon here. Yeah, the snapdragons are also really coming. And in Danish, what do we call this one? In Leumund. And that means? And um, that's like a lion's mouth. Yeah, so in Danish, it's the lion's <coughs> mouth. And that's also why we call it, yeah, a snapdragon, because it looks like. See when you open it here? Like a mouth of a, yeah, dragon or a lion. How funny. And we have this one in yellow and. And over here, if it's go. showing up in pink. You can get right it in a to lot the of different yeah. colors, actually. Yeah, these are some of nice my favorites. Paper. And in here, there's a bunch of seeds I'm going to collect later. Yeah, the flomus is also, maybe we show that real quick, Lars, back in the back. Talking about the yellow plants. Yeah, it's over here. Yeah, this was also last week when we took a tour of Lars's work at the, at the cemetery. Those were out, but ours weren't. But just here in this past week, they've really started. This is the Jerusalem sage. Yeah, I see the bees are really in it already now. Wow. And this is another funny one. In Danish, you call it? Løvmund. Uh, og løvhæle, And Nu blev jeg lige forvirret med løvmund, fordi de minder mig. They, yeah, they sound the same. Yeah, so this is the lion's tail. So yeah. we've got the lion's mouth over there. And oh, the then lion's the, tail. Yeah, this is the lion's tail instead. A little dysentery here, this bleeding heart. In Danish, the name translates as a lieutenant's heart. Yeah. Which or like just a heart flower. Because it looks like a, if you see the hearts here. We have, a, it, uh, we have it in white, but it's all already finished flowering in the, in the pink one we have. Here we have the, it's called the Sweet William, Studentenilke in Danish. Uh, and these ones I sold from seeds last year, and this is like a, a really a great mix of different colors. And it's really like a lot of people have in, in old gardens, they have memories of, like my grandmother had this one, so they always comment on when they come, wow, do we have this old, this old perennial, but it's really a great one. And over here we have in uh, different colors. I also sold some in, in a, like a really, Cute pink. 
it's over here, it's really nice. And further down here, we have it in... Yeah, like this really is one of my vibrant. favorites, yeah. yeah. You like this one. Really a vibrant color. That's really nice. And further over here, I can't remember if we showed last time, but a, like a really a dark color. And we've got a lot of these little guys. But that really takes up a lot of that middle, that middle border height. And sometimes a tricky size of plant. We also have it, yeah, right here. You can see that we grow it quite close to the border as well. We, we planted these stones, planted, we, we buried these stones. When we moved in, these stones that you see along our path, they were buried over here where we have this black fence. We grew this uh, gladaya from seeds. In Danish it's called uh, kokarde. It's really a nice one. As you know, we have a lot of yellows, but this has like a yellow turning into um, like reddish color. And we have it as a border plant here. It's, what I love the most about it is like it flowers until the frost comes and then we keep dead, deadheading it. It's really um, one of my favorite plants here. We totally forgot to show about the, the scabiosa here. It's really a, a great one and I love the, the, the purple here. What we all uh, oh, always do is that we take them in, in in vases as well, but it keeps flowering like all summer. And then when the buds are like almost gone here, we do a lot of deadheading where we remove it and then it just comes with a bunch of new uh, flowers. And it's really nice here in the front. Another great plant that it's uh, flowering right now is Sakilia. Um, and it's a uh, common yarrow. A lot of people say that it's um, like it's a weed. It is out in, in native to Denmark, out in the fields as well. And it's really good plant uh, if you have a lot of drought or if you live somewhere where there's zero rain, like here in Denmark. This is not very typical that we don't get a lot of rain for weeks. But it's, as you can see, I have it here at the border. I have it in this light pink and darker pink and there's also some white but it's really a, a great plant for dry dry weather so we haven't been watering this at all so that's what we've got growing on that was kind of funny. that's what we've got growing on that's what we've got going on right now in the Mr. garden comedian here. uh that was an accident i promise but that's what we've got going on right now um hopefully it was a quick tour uh chances are it was not very quick because lars and i can talk a little bit too much on <laughs> Uh, now we want to show you some of the things that we've been uh, been working on here in the garden for this week and some projects that we've taken care of this weekend. Uh, so stick around. One of the many, many garden projects we have here during the week is uh, deadheading, which I do like once a week or so. And when I deadhead, uh, it really makes the plant produce more and more flowers, which is a uh, Big bone. Uh, it's right. Yeah, like he has to be on this the side. Right? Yes. Is it my right or your right? Your right. My right. Okay. So this is how we trim the wisteria. Oh yeah, you got it. Hold it down. Yeah. Okay. Hold it down. This wisteria grows like crazy. It's actually two. One there and one there. And it gets really, really tall. And if we're not careful, it'll grab onto the tree. So we have our trusty eyes in the sky, making sure that we know what to clip. Ah, I see one there. And then uh, what not to clip. Yeah, me too. Can you get that one in the front, Malenzi? We really tried to get the aphids off our lupins, but uh, it's like a huge attack we have in all the plants here. 
We tried different things with uh, brown soap and water and sprayed them on. Nothing really helped. I think it's because we have really dry, uh, at a really dry and hot uh, Danish summer. So now we're just gonna, we decide we're just gonna cut it all down and then for sure it's gonna come again next year. Because as you can see here, the stems are full of aphids and we don't have enough uh, ladybugs yet to, to eat. You know, on Instagram, there's uh, gardens, you, you only see the really pretty flowers in bloom. But the truth is, you know, in every garden, there's stuff that doesn't really work out. So I'm just keep on cutting these down. <laughs> One of the ongoing projects here in the, in the garden is also to collect seeds from the perennial. It's not only autumn we do this. So when they all dry and wither out, it's a lot of them have big seeds, small, uh, some of them have smaller. But then we always just dump them in coffee filters and then always remember write a name on it. And then we store these until it's ready to sow them again. 